In this lesson, we are going to discuss uniqueness proofs. Let us recall that the statement there exists a unique P of X is equivalent to this one. There exists an X such that these two conditions are satisfied. P of X is true. And if it happens that P of Y is also true, then this Y over here must be the same as X because we want this X here to be unique. This part is the existential part and this part over here is the uniqueness part. Meaning to say if this is our domain and let's say that the domain is U, we can find an X here such that P of X is true. And if it so happens that there is another Y for which P of Y is true, this y over here must coincide with x so that there will only be one value for which p of x is true. Therefore, the proof of a statement like this consists of two parts. The first one is the existence. We've tackled this in our previous video lecture. It's either we use the constructive method or the non-constructive method. And then for the uniqueness part, you have two methods to choose from. The first is the direct way of showing uniqueness. Assume that there exist x and y such that p of x and p of y are true. And then you have to show that these two elements here must be the same. Or you can also proceed by contradiction. Suppose that there exist two distinct elements such that p of x and p of y are true and then you need to find a contradiction. For the examples in this video lecture, I will just be using method 1 because recall that if we can prove something without having to go through contradiction, the better. First, let us prove that there exists a unique multiplicative identity. As I have reiterated in our previous video lecture, it is very important that you write what you're trying to prove using symbols so that you can see your quantifiers. In symbols, this means there exists a Y such that for all X in the set of real numbers, X times Y is equal to X. That is the meaning of the multiplicative identity, right? If you multiply any number by that identity, you should get the original number. And notice here that Y does not depend on the value of x and of course it says unique so we have there exists a unique y so for our proof it will be divided into two parts this is for the existence part for the existence part what is our multiplicative identity of course we know that it is one however since the statement here does not show any x and y i will start by saying that one is a multiplicative identity because for any real number x, 1 times x, which is equal to x times 1, is equal to x. In this paragraph, I just mentioned that 1 satisfies the property of being a multiplicative identity. And then we are now going to prove the uniqueness. So for the uniqueness part, we assume that there exists two elements which are multiplicative identities. I will not use X and Y. You might be confused because those variables were already used. Let's just say A and B. So suppose A and B are multiplicative identities. What is our goal? We want to show that A is equal to B. So this is in parentheses because take note that this is not part of the proof. I just want you to know where you want to go. You want to show that A is equal to B. Since A is a multiplicative identity, and B is a real number, of course, if you are a multiplicative identity, you have to be a real number. A times B is equal to, what is this? I am using A as a multiplicative identity, so therefore A times B is equal to B. 
let's call this equation 1. Similarly, since B is a multiplicative identity, what is A times B? Here, I am using the fact that B is a multiplicative identity. So, any number multiplied to B should be equal to that number. So, therefore, that's equal to A. If we look at equations 1 and 2, we now get that A is equal to B. So, therefore, we can now talk about the multiplicative identity because we already know that it is unique. Next, let us prove that every non-zero real number has a unique additive inverse. Let us write this first using symbols. What is this? For every x element of R star, this means that x is a non-zero real number, there exists a unique Additive inverse. Let's say that this y is the additive inverse. It satisfies the property that x plus y must be equal to 0. For our proof, let us use this as our guide. We start with let x be a non-zero real number. Because we have for all x element of R star. What will be our y here? The choice of y depends on the choice of x because there exists a curse after for all x. What is our y? Our y is of course negative x. However, I will just say note that x plus negative x is equal to 0. So I no longer want to put a y in my proof just to make it simpler. I am saying here that negative x is an additive inverse. So hence, negative x is an additive inverse of the real number x. So this part here is the existence part. Now, for the uniqueness, suppose that x1 and x2 are both additive inverse of the arbitrary real number x here. Hence, x plus x1 equals 0 and x plus x2 is equal to 0. Since both of these two expressions are equal to 0, x plus x1 must be the same as x plus x2. Thus, we get that x1 must be equal to x2. And that is exactly what we want to show. We wanted to show that x1 and x2 must coincide. Next, let us show that there is a unique function f such that f prime of x is equal to 2x and f of 0 is equal to 3. In symbols, we have there exists a unique function f such that f prime of x is equal to 2x and f of 0 is equal to 3. Let's now prove this. Let us start with our existence part. What is that function f such that its derivative is 2x? Well, if you integrate both sides, you get that f of x is equal to x squared plus c, right? However, our f of 0 is equal to 3, which means that c must be equal to 3. I will start by giving this function f. Our function f is x squared plus 3. I will show that it satisfies this given condition. Let f of x be equal to x squared plus 3 and note that f prime of x is equal to 2x and f of 0 is equal to 3. That finishes the existence part. Next, for our uniqueness part, how do we proceed? Assume we have two functions, f1 and f2, but we will show eventually that they must be the same. 
f1 and f2 are functions which satisfy these conditions. First, we have f1 prime of x is equal to 2x and that is also the same for f2 prime of x and f1 of 0 is equal to 3 and this is also equal to f2 of 0. Let's call this equation 1 and equation 2. By equation 1, f1 and f2 differ by a constant. That is f1 of x is equal to f2 of x plus k. Remember that you want to show that these two functions, f1 and f2, are the same. That is, f1 of x should be the same as f2 of x. We haven't used equation 2. So, plugging in x equals 0 in equation 3 and using equation 2, we get that f1 of 0 is equal to f2 of 0 plus k, f2 of 0 is equal to 3. So we have 3 plus k and f1 of 0 is equal to 3. So thus, k is equal to 0. And so, f1 is equal to f2. So hence, we were able to show that these two functions are equal. For our last example, we want to show that for every real number x, so we have for all x, there exists a unique y such that x plus 1 squared minus x squared is equal to 2y minus 1. Since we have for all x here, we start our proof with let x be a real number and then we have there exists. So take y to be equal to what? If you solve for y here, you will get that y is equal to x plus 1. Then we will just show that our y satisfies this equation. Remember, when you want to show this equation, you have to show that the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side. So I will start with x plus 1 squared minus x squared. And this is equal to 2x plus 1. But then I want to write it in the form 2y minus 1. So this is 2 times x plus 1 minus 1. And this is precisely my 2y minus 1. Please don't do this. When you write it as x plus 1 squared minus x squared equals 2y minus 1 and then manipulating this you have 2x plus 1 is equal to 2 times x plus 1 minus 1. 2x plus 1 equals 2x plus 1. You do not write your proof like that. Why? Because you already assume that this two expressions are equal. But that is exactly what you want to show. You want to show that this expression is equal to this expression. You are, you are assuming here already that these two are equal. We are now ready for uniqueness. So you suppose that y1 and y2 are real numbers satisfying this equation. From these two equations, they are both equal to this expression. So therefore, 2y1 minus 1 is equal to 2y2 minus 1. And of course, by manipulating uh, these two equations, we get that y1 must be equal to y2. That concludes the proof.